Candace Bergen is the deputy leader of the Conservative Party. She's also there in the House of Commons joining us from Ottawa. Hi, Ms. Bergen. Good to see you. Thank you for making time. Hi, Vashi. Good to, uh, to talk to you. I listened to the press conference that you gave alongside your colleague Gerard Deltel earlier in which you uh, criticized the government for not giving basically more money or, or sort of responding to the ask of provinces, which was for a greater transfer of health care money. Uh, and I'm wondering, you also talked a lot about the government, in your view, ignoring the costs associated with so much that they've promised. Aren't the two kind of juxtapos juxtapos juxtaposed against each other? Isn't it, wouldn't it cost the government billions and billions of dollars to transfer this money to provinces without any strings? And wouldn't that go against the kind of uh, you know, fiscal responsibility that you're advocating for? Well, what we've seen today is a speech from the throne that uh, brought nothing new to Canadians. It's the same old liberal uh, grand schemes and grand promises and big, big words. And they've been saying these kinds of things for the last five years and no, uh, no plan to accomplish any of it. Uh, we were in the middle, as we all know, of a pandemic. The Prime Minister prorogued Parliament. He said he had to do that because he was going to present a plan to Canadians on how to deal with the second wave as well as how to deal with our economy. And that did not happen. So it's been clear that this speech from the throne really was an attempt for the Prime Minister to distract from the scandal that he was dealing with. Now, when it comes to the provinces who have had to deal with the fallout of the pandemic, uh, but we still do have a federal health minister who has a job to do. And the provinces said, listen, if you're not going to do it, get out of the way and let us do our job and provide the resources that are needed. So when we talk about the government spending Vashi, it's not just a matter of spend more money, it's spend money wisely. Spend money that will help the people that need help. Spend money that will help those who are being left behind. And we have not seen it previously when times were good, the, this government didn't know how to spend money. And when times are bad, they don't know how to invest money wisely and be responsible. So how would that's, be, that's, 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 that's the nuance that I, I think you're referring to. Well, but respectfully though, Ms. Bergen, how would transferring billions of dollars, kind of like a blank check to the provinces without any strings attached, Given the fiscal situation that this country faces right now, how would that be responsible? Well, first of all, I think when you look at each province, I'm from Manitoba, I'm, I'm here in Ontario right now. I know BC has a different approach. Alberta is doing what they believe is be best. Quebec has different challenges. Uh, Atlanta, Canada does. In this pandemic, the Prime Minister should recognize that the provinces are trying to deal with it in the best way that suits not only their own province, but even within their province, different regions. And this Ottawa knows best, Justin Trudeau will give them money, and we've seen him do this before, where he gives the provinces money or says that he'll help, and then if they don't align with his ideology, I'm thinking the carbon tax, for example, he then says, no, I'm not going to give you that support. So this is an overall, uh, what we wanted to see was respect to the provinces and maybe an admission from the Prime Minister that he should have listened early when the pandemic hit in January when uh, opposition as well as others were asking him to do things like close the border, uh, de deal with the pandemic early and, and in a responsible way. He should have done that. And he is just repeating many of the same promises that he's been making for the last five years. And uh, it, it gives its very, very, very little comfort for those who are dealing with specific problems. I mean, I'm thinking of people whose mortgages are coming due and the deferral is, is up. Those mortgages still have to be paid and, and, and the Prime Minister has no plan uh, to, to, to really provide any kind of, uh, of support and, and actually a way out of this. I mean, I, I saw three specific things in this speech that speak to exactly what you just laid out. First of all, transitioning people who were relying on CERB. So, for example, those who had to defer their mortgages over to the EI system and creating a whole new benefit, basically, for people who don't qualify for EI. For businesses that are struggling, they're going to expand SEBA, as well as extend the wage subsidy all the way until next summer. So what beyond that did you not see that would well, address people who are struggling? Thank you, Vashi. You know, let's talk about unemployment. People want to get back to work. We just heard today some of the highest numbers of unemployment in the natural resources sector. Those people do not just want to be on EI, and I know that that's what the Liberals said was the solution to Albertans and those who work in the oil and gas sector. EI is not a solution. Uh, and when you talk about small businesses, this is the government that has refused to listen to small businesses. And so when they say to small businesses, we're going to support you, 
there's not a lot, a lot of confidence in them following through or doing anything that would actually help small businesses. So, so what more, I guess, did you want then? Beyond, if, if you say that people well, don't, you know, yeah, happy, that EI isn't yeah. enough, if, if this no. wage subsidy isn't enough, what conservatives do that would still keep spending controlled, which you said you wanted to, but also address what you're talking about? Well, I think that there are a number of things, and, and, and we'll continue to lay those out. But Vashi, what we saw today was a government that said we are going to keep spending because if government goes into debt, then people aren't going into debt. That is very, that's alarming actually for the Prime Minister to still think the budgets balance themselves. They don't balance themselves. And when the government goes into debt, that is the people's debt, the Canadian people's debt. So that's alarming. The only thing he did promise was raising taxes on Canadians. And that does seem to be a consistent theme with this government. We believe that there have been ways when times were good to manage the books, to manage the fiscal situation so that when times were bad, we had some cushion. We also could spend wisely, not just spend to reward our friends and those well connected to the party, which is what the Liberals did, but spend in a wise way, help people. For sure, we supported the CERB, we support helping people, but let's encourage people and reward people who want to get back to work. Let's not make that single mom have to decide, do I take those extra shifts to make the payment or then my CERB's going to be cut? It'll be the same on EI. They'll have the same challenges. EI is not an answer and you're right like here's here's the real problem we've got a government that does not know how to manage the finances of this country during good times they certainly don't know how to manage the finances during difficult times but with respect miss bergen my question was specifically what the conservatives would do differently to help people who you say the government is ignoring and you didn't provide any alternatives we actually have we we talked about the serb uh, a, a number of weeks ago and talked about how we believe that it should be more generous and more flexible so that's something that we would have done. We would provide direct support to small businesses, even in terms of helping them make the rent rather than providing it to landlords. Let's help those small businesses directly. Agricultural sector, you know, that they have been so ignored by this government. Uh, as I've already talked about the natural resources sector. So those are things that would have, would have helped and also would have sent the signal that this government recognizes that things are not okay and they cannot just keep repeating what they've been trying to do for the last five years with very little success. If they truly wanted to press reset, they should have presented a plan, uh, just like we have uh, other countries who have a plan when it comes to testing. I mean, that's another huge issue is testing in this country and people getting access to being able to be tested for COVID. So there are, there are a number of things that they could have done better and they didn't. Ms. Bergen, the Ontario caucus yesterday used a serological test to claim that people were COVID free that wasn't even approved by Health Canada. Is your party really qualified to criticize the government well, on its regulatory process? Well, my understanding is uh, there was a company in one of the writings that uh, wanted to show our Ontario caucus what they were working on. We actually think that innovators in this country who are trying to find solutions to these challenges should be rewarded and not somehow put down or seen as doing something nefarious. We believe that Health Canada should be able to review and check out these types of options in a quick way and in, and in a responsible way. That's what governments do, Vashi. So we support small businesses, we support innovators, we support Canadian uh, businesses and technology finding solutions to these challenges. But then it's up to the government to ensure that the infrastructure is there, the regulatory infrastructure, so that these uh, types of tests can be quickly reviewed and, and, and allow, the, allow the public to use them. So are you saying if Canadians believe that process isn't working for them, they should just bypass it and not wait for the approval of Health Canada before using things like tests for COVID-19? Absolutely not, Vashi. But that's we, what your caucus did. Well, the, I, I think when, you, when you're a member of parliament and you have businesses in your riding, I know I do this a lot where I will go um, and see what people are doing and, uh, and, and look at what they're doing. No, nobody was saying that this was uh, an approved and official uh, test. But I think what you're saying is that Canadians are supposed to just sit back and wait for hours, sometimes days to get tested. You know, maybe for some liberals it's okay when parents who have kids who have a runny nose, maybe a few sniffles, can't go to school for a week because they're waiting. 
weeks, or not weeks, but days to get tested, that that's okay. A lot of the parents that I know cannot afford to stay home and wait for these Liberals to come, uh, come to the table and do the work that they should be doing. Yeah, that's I, not yeah. okay. I don't disagree. There are genuine questions for the government and for Health Canada around the process. I just wonder what kind of message your party is sending by bypassing it at this juncture. Well, nobody bypassed anything. It was, uh, again, a way to look at some work that some innovators in uh, one of the ridings in Ontario was doing. I think it's wonderful that they were doing that. Nobody bypassed it. No one said that this was an official uh, approved Health Canada test. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Bergen. I appreciate your time this evening, Thank as you. always. I'll bring in now Jagmeet Singh. He's the leader of the NDP, and he's at the House of Commons here in Ottawa. Hi, Mr. Singh. Good to see you again. Thank you for making time. Thank you, Ms. Capello. It's an honour to be here. So I I'm just trying to be clear, and I'm hoping you can be as clear as possible with our viewers. You've said that you would like to see the amount that people receive if they transition to EI increase to what they would have re received on the CERB, and you would also like to see uh, more permanent sick paid sick leave. If those two pieces uh, are introduced through legislation, will you support the throne speech? Well, we made it clear that if those two things are presented, we would absolutely vote for those two items because those are things that we need right now. Canadians are desperate. Uh, the ones who cannot get back to work, who are on CERB, don't know what's going to happen in just a couple of days, in fact. They don't know what's going to happen, and it's cruel to do that to them. And that's why we're saying, first and foremost, we need to make sure that they receive the same amount of support that they've been receiving. And the paid sick leave is something we fought for. The Liberals um, promised it as a part of an agreement for a very important vote, and they still have not delivered it. So those are two things that we want to see, and we would absolutely support it. And if we have those two things that workers and people need, then we could look at the throne speech through the lens of, okay, there's some action here that's actually going to help people. Otherwise, we're left with the first proposal on the table as it stands, based on what we received in the summer, is basically a proposal to cut the help, to cut the amount of help that Canadians who can't go back to work receive. And that, to me, is absolutely wrong. So, so that still, Mr. Singh, isn't clear to me. So you'd support that kind of legislation, and that would allow you to take another look at the throne speech. That doesn't qualify for me whether you'd support it or not. Well, at that point, then we'd be able to look at the throne speech with a different lens. Right now, the lens is, well, the way I look at the throne speech, a lot of nice words on paper, words that we've seen before, words that we've seen decades before, because the, the Liberal government promised pharmacare and childcare decades ago, and they still haven't delivered. So saying it again now is not going to change anything for people who need childcare right now. It's not going to change anything for families that can't afford the medication that they need to live. So uh, I'm not so concerned with the words if the words aren't backed up by action. And we've seen in the past throne speeches have been done by this Liberal government and they haven't acted on it. So for me to be able to assess this throne speech and for our team to assess it, we need to see that they're actually committing to real action that helps people, doesn't hurt them. And right now all we're seeing is pretty words or nice words on one side and actions that are going to cut the amount of help that people receive on the other. And that, to me, doesn't give me any confidence in the words that the Liberals are, are saying now. So absent those two pieces on sick leave and EI, you would not support the throne speech? Well, absent those two things, there's going to be millions of Canadians that are not going to get help. I mean, I, I want to make it about the people. Like, there's going to be millions of Canadians that in just a couple of days are not going to get any help and they can't go back to work. What is the impact of that? How much is that going to hurt all of us? Right, if that happens. And the paid sick leave, we know that we're in a second wave now with numbers increasing, and workers are still going to work sick because they don't have paid sick leave. And so, I mean, the impact is that people are going to be hurt, and, and, I, and I would blame the Liberal government for that. I, I understand completely the argument that you make about the people who are impacted, but my question is one that has you know, significance. If you did not support the throne speech, there is a chance that the government will fall and an election will happen. So it's, a, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not just about those two items. And I think that's why I'm asking you for a clear answer. In the absence of them providing legislation on those two items, is the throne speech, is that, is, are you not going to support the throne speech and therefore possibly force an election? Well, we'll get to the, our decision on the throne speech, but right now there's an immediate urgency where millions of Canadians are, are, are going to be hurting. And that, to me, is, is my first and foremost, I'm worried about them. And that's going to happen in a couple of days. So the Liberal government has to act. And I'm saying that for them to act, for us to support it, it has to be the same level of support that they receive. And we would support that. 
that's something that's top of mind right now. And the throne speech vote will happen down the road. It's uh, as it ha has in the past. Sometimes it could take weeks or, or months. Uh, we're, we'll be ready to vote and we'll decide which way we vote uh, when the time comes. But immediately, here's an opportunity for the Liberal government to do what we believe is right for people. People need this. They need to know that there's EI supports or Serb supports that are at the same level. Whatever it is, whatever it's called, they need the same amount of support. They can't see that cut. And we need paid sick leave. Those are two things that are important right now while we're facing a second wave. There are bills on the order paper around supports and, and financial supports. Has the government provided you with any indication that what you have asked for will be in there? Well, since the summer, what we know in the, in the public domain, it was uh, cuts to that help. And that's what we were uh, looking at in the summer. Uh, we're looking forward to receiving updates with uh, the new session beginning now. And I'm hoping that the Liberal government will heed what we're saying don't cut the help that families need. We're facing a second wave. To cut the amount of money that families receive right now would be a cruel thing to do. Don't do that. And bring in the paid sick leave. We know that workers want to go to work, but they should not go to work if they're sick. But how can they make that choice if they have no paid sick leave? So that's really important right now. And what leave beyond what they've already uh, given to the provinces are you looking for? I mean, they have supplied money. They have s essentially subsidized paid sick leave across the country for the next six months. Why isn't that enough? Well, right now we don't have it in legislation in a way that's going to help all Canadian workers that need paid sick leave. And so we're asking for the Liberal government to, to come true on that promise that they made to us that we fought for uh, because we want to fight for workers to make sure that they can take a paid sick leave if they are feeling sick so that they are not putting their colleagues at risk or making the impossible choice to not... Uh, work and then not be able to make their bills at the end of the month. So this is vital and it, right now as it stands it's not clear that all workers have it and we want to see that clarity. We want to know that all workers can stay home if they're sick and still receive uh, paid sick leave so they can pay their bills and we want to know that the millions of Canadians that can't work are going to continue to get the help they need. You, you said often today that the throne speech from your perspective is kind of just empty words and you've criticized the Liberals in the past for having uh, empty words, as, as you put it. If, in fact, that's what you feel about the agenda that the government has put forward, why would you even consider supporting the throne speech, just on principle alone? If, in fact, you're trying to say to Canadians that you are the ones fighting for them, that you are the ones standing on principle, why not just come out today and say that you won't support it? Well, because my goal isn't to find ways to tear down government. My goal is to find ways to fight to deliver something for people, to fight for people in a meaningful way. And there's an opportunity here. We've got a really important emergency that's facing millions of Canadians. The help that they need is going to be cut out. They need to know that there's going to be help for them. And so we're fighting for that. We know that a lot of workers want to be able to know that they can actually take a sick leave if they're feeling sick, if they've got COVID-19 symptoms. In a pandemic, that seems to be an obvious thing. We want to fight for that. That's the, the most important thing for me. The priority is people. we got to fight for them and deliver for them. If it comes to it, I'm ready to fight an election, but that is not my goal. Facing a second wave with lots of unanswered questions about supports for people, that is not my goal. I'm ready to do it, but it is not my goal. My goal is to find a way forward, and that's why we're giving the Liberal government a chance to show that their words aren't just empty words. Do something now with some concrete action to help people and then we can look at the throne speech and, and make our decision. Are you avoiding opposing the throne speech because your party can't afford an election? Not at all. If it comes to it, I've said before, we, we will look at all options. We are prepared to fight an election. Again, I don't want to do that. That is not my goal because that's not going to serve the best interest of people who need to know that they will have that, that support if they're not able to go back to work. We want to know that families can count on the same amount of support. And we want to make sure people have paid sick leave. And there's so many other things that we need to do. People are worried about their loved ones and elders in long-term care homes. Families are still worried about their kids going to school. And there's lots that we've been able to do. There's lots that we've been able to fight and achieve. And we want to continue to do that. Okay, I'll leave it there, Mr. Singh. Thanks for your time, as always. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ms. Capellos. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.